Now we did see a hint of the old fallouts in this in the in the conference as well. Oh yeah. We saw the, uh, like the different head types or power armor like in the old Fallout games. Yep, exactly. Uh, the the t I, don't, I don't know whether the new perk system that wasn't shown off in the E3 comment specifically, but I wonder if that's going to be a bit like going to have some of the old perks. I wonder if that like you know you know what I mean like the because they have that new tiered system where it's like you get a perk. And then you can like level up that perk or something, something like that. I forget yeah, exactly every, how that every works. Every perk has like tiers in it. I think they showed it off in more like the special videos, right? Um, where they were like, if you, what I really like that they did in this game is that you can in Fallout Four. That is, um, if you make a character right off the bat and give him ten luck, like I did with this character. Um, holy crap! Forty-five garment rounds right off the bat. That's nuts. Uh, anyway, if you give him uh, ten luck. The way that perks are unlocked in the game, Fallout 4, is that they're tiered, so that the higher your stat, because e the perks all come off of your special stats, so the higher your stat is, the further down into the tree you can um, get those perks. So if you have a character who has 10 luck right off the bat, you can um, get the very last luck perk in the game, like at the very beginning. You can get that. And, and that's pretty fantastic. That actually kind of leads into the next thing I want to talk about. We, we already had a discussion earlier before we started recording about that. But that, that's actually fantastic where the special the special in Fallout to me has always been the person's born talent. Then you have your skills and then you have your perks on top of it. So, like, it makes sense that if somebody, like, you're starting your character, they're special. They're, like, kind of, like, they're very lucky. They're just a lucky person. Would be able to do things that lucky people do they wouldn't have to train up it's yeah. like oh i'm very lucky but i don't know how to yeah, cheat at cards you know yeah, what i mean you don't, you don't train like i guess it's hard to hard to specify like for certain things like you say you you do specifically train your strength sure but if you're naturally a very strong person then it's not like sorry you have to have the perk to like pick up this heavy machine gun because you do have eight strength but your character hasn't learned how to use a heavy machine gun yet. Like, that sort of thing. Like, that doesn't make sense. And they kind of did that in 3, where, you know, your character would be, um, like, a very charismatic person. They were a people person. They had 10 charisma right off the bat in the game. But you have to level up your speech skill. Like, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, no, so. exactly. And we were also discussing that the the... The almost, like, the tiered leveling system, I want to say, like, where there's you have your special, your skill, and then your perk, like I mentioned before, is that the special was, to me, it was almost always an afterthought. I never really thought about my special. I kind of assigned it in the beginning a little bit like I wanted, maybe a little bit even. Like, I, I kind of like to play an, an even character sometimes, especially when I'm first starting out in a game. So, the special was kind of forgotten. But it sounds like, in Fallout 4, they're actually going to be, and I'm speculating here, but it sounds like they're going to be actually taking a bit of a a more direct like look at each of the parts like i'm sure that the skills are definitely going to come into play when you're actually playing actively but the perks are, have always been a large part of the follow follow you know fr franchise and now those are relying on your special so you're going to want to have to pay attention to each tier of that level now yeah like your special skills feel more integral to the game now like before it was sort of just like you said like a background thing and you never really took notice of it but then like as we were talking before in this game, I personally feel like... Oh, when I say this game, I mean New Vegas. I personally feel like the special is more... Um, it's more integral in the game than it was in 3 because they make more note of it in like speech checks and how you interact with the world. Because if you have a character right off the bat who has crazy luck, you can go to the casinos and just make a shit ton of caps right off the bat. Like I just did a playthrough where I just made a guy with 10 luck. And the first thing I did was go kick, get kicked out of all the casinos, and I got fifty-one thousand caps, and I was level two. So like, and like that that can just be like your game. Like you just you're you're a useless in combat, but you're the luckiest person in the world. So, do you actually that that kind of leads into another thing is in the Fallout series. This isn't necessarily specifically about Fallout Four, but in the Fallout series and actually really any RPG for me, I always try to at least for the first run, and I actually do it for most runs, I don't like to lock a part out of the part of the game out for me. 
So like in yeah. in Bethesda games, like there's obviously the sort of the scaling of the level. So you can basically like this game is a bit of an exception because it was made by Obsidian. So there's some levels, some areas where you need to be a higher level to get into. Yeah. Specifically, Death Claws, which I personally like, but but like in in general, Bethesda developed titles. You you typically can go anywhere, you can do anything because the area will level to you. So. I always try to make an even character so that I don't lock a section yeah. of the game for me. Like, I'll be like, I'll be okay at gambling, I'll be okay at shooting, I'll be okay at repair, I'll be, you know what I mean? Like, jack a jack of all, of all trades. trades. Rather than, because I don't want to lock a part of the game. Do you do you care, or do you always, do you, like, plan, to, like, do you go super strength, and then you plan to go, play another character eventually, which, like, you know, super intelligent or something? Um, I mean, I'm an RPG person, usually, when it comes to games like this, so... I, I like to have a character who is specifically good at one thing, and then, because in a game like this, when you've got a jack of all trades, the game's kind of a bit boring to me. I find because right. if, if you're okay at everything, like that's totally a build you can do. But I, I'm a build type, like a build a character type of person. So I would like, you know, a character with a lot of um, agility, and then I can, you know, just destroy people in fights because I'm using um, vats a lot, and they can't fight back from that. Oh, that, I, yeah, I, that's I, like I the left, the, uh, left the comfort zone. Um, <laughs> You've left the tutorial. Yeah. Um, so the one thing I liked in this game was that right off the bat it let you use iron sights, which they didn't let you do in 3. 3 was weird. It just, it just like, literally moved the camera simulated, closer. Simulated iron sights, yeah. I'm pretty sure you can turn it off in this game. But by default, it's good. Or it's on, rather. I, th I think everybody kind of wants that. And, and in Fallout 4, we actually saw, obviously, a decent amount of gunplay... And the gunplay seems very, very focused. Like, it almost seemed like Fallout 3. Fallout 3, when it came out, obviously it was, like, almost a reboot of the Fallout series. And it was, it was more trying to catch that environment, that sort of feeling of Fallout, that you're in this post-apocalyptic world, that there's, like, corrupt government officials that are still, like, government plans that are still affecting you, like Vault 101, the Vault Project, like, or uh, Project Safe House, was it more specifically... So there's, like, they tried to, like, kind of capture everything because it was a reboot. So for anyone who hadn't played the previous titles, like myself, I just jumped into Fallout, and I kind of got a really good grasp of what was going on. So there was less focus on the little itty-bitty things in the gameplay. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they're going to have stuff like that in 4. I would not be surprised, but... Yeah, I definitely think that they're going to continue with, like, focusing on the lore. I think that Fallout is actually a very... It's a very lore-heavy series. It's a very lore-heavy series. I'd almost say it's more lore-heavy than the Elder Scrolls series. Um, that's hard to say, because there's a lot of stuff, there we go, that's what I was looking for, there's a lot of stuff <laughs> in, like, especially with, like, Skyrim and Oblivion, those games, there's a lot of books where you can read a lot of shit, and, uh, you need to be careful. yeah, 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 get out of here, with me. I don't care. <laughs> there's a lot of shit that you can read about that you may have otherwise not, like, you may have otherwise gone past, and, like, my favorite part of Skyrim is the one unmarked quest that I think most people coll colloquially no, as the uh, Aetherium Wars, which is um, the book of the same name, where you um, you go around basically the entirety of Skyrim, looking for these like pieces of this magical um, material called Aetherium, I guess, and uh, eventually you go to oh my god, everything's busted. Um, eventually you go to this like massive dungeon and. It's an unmarked quest, so there's it's it's Morrowind style. Like you're reading the books to figure out where to go and talking to the people and stuff. So you um you kind of have to like fight your way through. Like there's no quest marker. You figure no... it all out yourself, yeah, which is really cool. And um, I think I saw you do it. That's the one where you have to forge that Ethereum or whatever the heck at it the, is. At the end, yeah, you go around the world to these four specific locations. Some of them you've already been to, some of them you haven't, and it's sort of like a callback. It's sort of like an end game kind of thing. Because you, uh, you fight specific enemies in the uh, dungeons, and the dungeon is massive. I think the first time I went through it, it took me about I don't know, it took me about three hours to get through the dungeon itself. So like, um, I think I saw you do that actually. I think you were here and hanging out. My, I think we were hanging out together or something. I think you were doing it for like a good chunk of the day. It's yeah, and it, it was so cool because like it's so unlike the rest of the game and you get such a good reward out of it because basically the story goes and I'm sure people who um, have played Skyrim have played that quest can attest to that um, 
it's just cool that you there it's so uh, story based where you have to talk to the people and you have to figure it all out yourself and then um, they're probably not going to mind any spoilers or anything for it because it is pretty cool but anyway the um, long and short of it is that you go around the world you get these pieces and with that you only get like there's only a small amount because it's a very rare material so you go to this basically you go to this Dwemer Forge and uh, which is the only place in the world that could even like handle the stuff which right. is very convenient being in Skyrim that all the pieces are there and that all of the uh, <laughs> the place that you need to work it uh, is also there so that's all very convenient to, to be fair though I mean you, you do have to make a selection you can only select one item you and only have enough yeah, of the material at the end because you've only got so little of it you can only choose one of three things and one is a shield um, I can't remember what that does one is a headpiece I think one's a sword or a ring or something like that but uh, I picked the uh, circlet because it allows you to have the power of two standing stones oh that's so, cool so you have the power of a standing stone on your person and then you store a standing stone in the headpiece so whenever you're wearing the headpiece, that's the drawback, is that you have to be wearing it for it to be in effect. So I just kept the uh, the steed stone on my headpiece, which increases your run speed and carry weight by like 200 pounds or something like that. And being a thief character, having a high carry weight is very, uh, very handy. I think my character had like 700 pounds of carry weight, or <laughs> whatever the... That's ridiculous. The measurement is. So you just yeah. go out there, grab a bunch of crap, Freaking, good armor and stuff, and then yeah. just go for one heck of a selling run. Yeah, exactly. Which is why I very quickly got a million gold in that on that character but um that was my highest level character as well and like that was my absolute favorite part of skyrim was that it's totally like unassuming you would have no idea that that quest is there if you never picked up a book or anything so yeah. that, that that that's pretty cool it's kind of a nod to almost the old rpgs where they didn't have the markers they didn't we hadn't developed um a method i guess of game mechanic or we didn't. I don't. I don't know why we did it that way. Because I'm sure we could have handled map markers. Like I'm sure that the, the computers or whatever was running at the time wasn't like pushed to the limit where they couldn't have a little marker on your on your compass. I think maybe it was a time of thinking, or maybe we were developing that th sort of thing. But it's kind of a cool like nod for anybody who who actually cares to read that type of, type of thing to actually go back and re go into it. Yeah, and like it might turn some people away, and it might not. Um, it turned me away. So for <laughs> <laughs> and it's just that's the thing, right? Like. You could have had such a good uh, reward for it, and that's that's pretty much the uh, that's the draw, I guess. Now I do like I do like that because I, I will say that going going for going into an RPG uh, and like kind of finishing like so like I'll start a game and I'll maybe I'll beat the story and like specifically in a, in this type of game I'll like beat the story maybe I'll beat a few side quests along the way then I'll kind of get bored I'll lose my attention but I like having something there to go back to so that when I when I do come back I have something to do I'm not just going back and wandering the world which I like doing yeah. occasionally but I don't want that to be my only thing I want there to be a potential objective so I, I do like like little things like that hidden things like that and things that I left because I just was like oh I just won't do that do that now and you're not gonna have any problem with that in Fallout as they've said, the game itself is like 400 hours. There's some, yeah, it's something crazy. Something the map is obscene. massive. Yeah. So, so there's definitely a lot of a lot of lore. There's definitely going to be a lot of those like cool little things where you're you know wandering through the wasteland and you like find Jesus. Yeah. He's he's not he's oh, okay. no longer with us. But we're, there's going to be a lot of things in the wasteland where uh, where you like where you're wandering and you find like something really cool. Um, an example, I can't think of one in, in Fallout specifically. Actually, no, yes, I can think of one in Fallout specifically. Do you remember? It was really stupid. The naughty nightwear, or the sexy sleepwear, whatever it was. It was like the mm -hmm. delivery. Yep. And you go in there, and then the guy comes in there, and he's like, Hey, that was mine, or something stupid like that. I forget exactly what the yeah, what it was. Yeah, it was in a, in a vault, yeah. But it was, it, that, like, stuff like that's really cool. Or there's the little vault stories where you can, like, read the terminals. You can read yep. the 911 calls and the... Uh, the Georgetown, I think it was, or maybe it's Germantown, I forget what it was, the police station in Fallout 3, mm -hmm. those are really cool. Like, just little things like that are just really, really neat. Long story short, <laughs> Bethesda develops the lore in their shit. Yeah, to, yeah, to be fair. That's just the long and short, is that all their games, the longer you think about it, the more you realize. There's a lot there. There's a lot of lore.
I'm surprised there's not more books. Like, I know there's some Elder Scrolls books out there, like, novels specifically. Mm-hmm. And I'm just surprised that since, like, somebody hasn't, like, you know, gotten the license or whatever to sort of, or however that works for book writing, to sort of just go, go at it and they, like, write a book. But I guess maybe they want to do all their storytelling in the game, whereas they would, if they, if somebody writes a novel, and depending on the length of it, there might be, like, a whole bunch of stuff they add to the lore just by literally telling a tale. And then they have to, like, take that into account. Now they're like, oh, well, this character went to this part of the world. We can't do a game there because I got destroyed in this book or That's like, what whatever. I was going to say. Yeah, you have to have it separate lore from the from the games, but then you could have, you know, um, you give the people the creativity to, or you give them the uh, creative freedom, I guess, to be able to develop that part of the world if they want to. And, uh... You kinda, yeah, you kind of you kind of let them... Like, your character, like, as the lone wanderer, or as the courier, or, you know, as it is. Like, you are the legend, you are the thing, so there's no one... Like, you're writing the legends, you're not reading the legends, I guess is a better way to say it. The easy way would just to be have it to be separate from the games. Yeah, that's true, you could say they're non-canon, although then it kind of takes away from the the need for it, but... Fair enough. 